here with something I haven't done in a really long while. I have an unboxing for you. This is an unboxing of Owl Crate from April and the reason I have this is because I asked for it for my birthday because my birthday was at the end of April. And I thought the theme of this sounded really amazing. So the theme of this box was Full Moon Magic. And I actually lucked out because the book that's in it is something that I had just added. So I didn't get this box on time because it shipped a little bit late due to the pandemic. So I actually just got it this past weekend even though my birthday was at the end of April. And it happened to be a book that I kept seeing around Instagram and then I added to my Amazon saved cart. And then it ended up being the book and it's a super cool edition so I really lucked out there. Um, let's see. I don't know where to start. So I've already opened this one. Sometimes when I used to do unboxings regularly, I would just open them in front of the camera for the first time. But this was actually a gift from my mom, so she wanted to see what all the items were inside. So I'm a little less organized, kind of. Um, so the first thing is... Um, yes, let's do this first. So the first thing is this canvas pouch with a quote from Oscar Wilde and then inside is a bamboo moon phase banner and this was created by Paperback Bones who is an Owlcrate team member. So there's the canvas and these were actually kind of difficult to get in when I took them out but hopefully I don't spend five minutes doing it on camera. But so these are the phases of the moon and I'm assuming that they would just be able to string across like that. Um, I actually just got off work and I'm about to go for a walk and do some yoga so I don't want to make too big of a mess um, that I have to clean up afterwards. Okay, so that's the first item. Then there is a Shatter Me inspired tote bag created by Unlucky Designs and this says the moon is a loyal companion so it's just a black tote bag. This is the design. It is one sided. The other side is just plain black. And I like this because it's actually nice and simple. Um, so I am looking forward to using that. Uh, what else? Notebook. So whether you use this to jot down quotes or endless, keep track of your endless TBR, this notebook featuring an Oscar Wilde quote and artwork from Kim Becker Design will let you do it in style. This says, there's already dog hair on it, with freedom, books, flowers, and the moon, who could not be happy? So that is an Oscar Wilde quote. And it's just regular lined pages. I'm actually thinking of, I read tarot, and I'm actually thinking of making a book of all my own personal, like what the different cards mean for my own personal interpretations, because I've been doing it for a while now, like three years, so I've started to adapt my own like meanings for the cards and stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see. This is inspired by Winterwood, which is an amazing book. You can find a review for it on this channel by Shay Earnshaw, whose two books that she's written I've really loved. They're kind of dark magic fantasy, contemporary fantasy. Um, but there is this cute bracelet, and it doesn't say. It just says it was made by Team Alcrate. So it is, I don't know if you can see, it's a crescent moon on one side and then just a solid like circle on the other and even the box though is pretty cute for this it's got a little like owl crate triple goddess logo on it let's see this is pretty cool although i don't tend to use these because well i'll explain in a second uh we saw i swear that you'll have fun piecing together our 300 piece jigsaw puzzle and the art is created by italian art um, and it features her drawing of Remus from Harry Potter, from um, Mooney, which is a really beautiful illustration. So this is a puzzle. Um, I don't think I opened it. I don't really do puzzles anymore because I want to frame them all and you need wall space, like lots of wall space to frame them all. So, but it is a puzzle, which it's pretty cool. I guess puzzle sales have been really up since the whole like quarantine thing, but now things are starting to reopen again. So, um, 
let's see that's the book am i missing oh this is the white wide woods design this enamel pin i guess book i'll create now doing a monthly enamel pin and it goes with the book which i will tell you about in a moment so it's an owl and then it's got phases of the moon which i think is super cool so really excited for this book and this edition is so beautiful sorry I'm taking it out of its protective plastic. So this is Bone Crier's Moon. And if you, Alcrate does like a little magazine each month. And if you look inside, somewhere in here, you can see the difference between, so this is their cover and then this is the regular cover. And now instead of a book plate because it's been that long since i've really done a, an unboxing there is this gorgeous like special page in here with katherine purdy's signature right inside the book no no book plates um and then there is gold sprayed edges which sprayed edges is kind of a thing uh, if I remember correctly, I don't think the naked cover is anything special. Yeah, it's just a reg regular, like, gray color. Um, but this is super, super pretty. Um, so here is the synopsis. It says, Bone criers have a sacred duty. They alone can keep the dead from preying on the living, but their power to ferry the spirits of the dead into goddess Alara's night heavens of Tyrus's underworld comes from sacrifice. The gods demand a promise of dedication at the cost of the bone crier's one true love. Elise, I'm not really sure how to say her name, have been prepared since birth. Elise has been prepared since birth to become the matriarch of the bone criers, but first she must complete her rite of passage and kill the boy she's also destined to love. Bastian's father was slain by a bone crier and he's been seeking revenge ever since, but his vengeance comes too late. Elise's ritual has begun and now their fates are entwined in life and in death. Sabine has never had the stomach for the bone crier's work, but when her best friend Elise is taken captive, Sabine will do whatever it takes to break the bond between Elise and Bastian before they all die. The first Pulse Pounding novel in a new duology from the New York Times bestselling author Burning Glass, which I also think I have, but I haven't read, shines with Dune romance, macrobe magic, and a betrayal with the power to shatter the boundary between the living and the dead. Do you say macabre or macrobe? Just curious. It's one of those words that I read all the time, but I suspect that I'm actually reading it wrong in my head. Kind of like caveat, like my entire life up until like five years ago. And I think I even said this in other videos, I thought it was Kavit. Because I never made the connection between seeing it written and hearing it. So, fun fact that happens to me all the time. Um, but yeah, Catherine Birdie lives in Salt Lake City, Utah with her husband and three children. She's a trained classical actress who studied at the Oxford School of Drama. She also writes songs on her guitar for each of her stories and shares them on her website. Bone Cries Moon is her love letter to France. Oh, I'm such a francophile. Where she spent a summer when she was 19. I spent three weeks there. I think it was like three weeks and three days when I turned 18. So we have that in common, more or less. And the three French girls who helped her through her own rite of passage. That's a fun story. So I was super, super looking forward to this. It's a nice sized book, so I'm very excited to read this. Like I said, and the art is gorgeous. Um, the next month, which is now, and I don't know if it's sold out or not because I haven't uh, checked, but the May theme is Rebels with a Cause. So here is the spoiler card for May. Well, not spoiler card, but theme card for May. Um, and it says each May box will include a graphic novel from Ani Press, two books in one box. Uh, and I think that's it. There's also a little letter. Uh, in addition to the little magazine, there's usually an author letter if you've never gotten an owl crate before. Um, and I see the word star-crossed lovers, which is, besides the chosen one, my favorite um, trope in a book. No enemies to lovers here. I will make maybe an exception for Cardin and Jude, but I haven't read Queen of Nothing yet. Um, because I didn't like The Wicked King all that much compared to The Cruel Prince, so I've been kind of hesitant to read it. But I'm also about to have a book review for you because I finished a book yesterday. So expect that soon as well. I'm actually not sure which video I'm going to upload first. If I'm going to upload this first or if I'm going to upload the book review first. But either way, in the meanwhile, happy reading and happy writing.